Hey guys, this is Grant Coombs III, aka Ball Bomb, coming to you for another video from CardRunners.com. This is going to be the second part of my Leak Finder series with Peter, who's playing 200 NL at Bovada. In the first section, we were talking a lot about some really basic, um, or I shouldn't say basic, some really some ways to shore up his fundamentals, particularly when talking about sea betting, and also some more creative way uh, talking about sea betting and also really focusing on donk betting and where to apply it and where maybe you can adjust a little bit. Um, in this video, I'm hoping to see a little bit more creativity from Peter, particularly considering that we're in an interesting spot where our image is not great in the fact that we're losing a lot of single bet pots. At the same time, though, we have been extremely tight with our three betting, and therefore we should be able to utilize that to our advantage. So I skipped ahead just a little bit of the footage so that we can see as many interesting spots as possible um, throughout the video. As always, this is going to be table one, table two, table three in the bottom left, and table four in the far right. We start off by just calling tens on the button, which I definitely think is going to be the best play. We haven't established yet if this player is going to be someone that's going to be calling with a large percentage of his opening range. So therefore, I think that tens is going to be played much better. It's just a call in position or a strong call in position that we can play against uh, back races if we happen to face them. He bets 13 into the queen nine deuce board with uh, two hearts on it. And we end up calling the flop, and I actually think that this is probably a super tight fold. I would prefer that instead um, for a couple of reasons. First of all, we have, we're out of position relatively. We have one other player to act. Additionally, we do not have a backdoor heart draw, which I think is probably the most important part of this that would definitely lead me to, it would lead me to my final decision of simply just folding the flop. And because we're going to be out of position against a player that we know is going to be calling rather lightly, I think it puts us in some really difficult spots. Really in a spot where we're just hoping that our opponent doesn't fire the turn. If he fires the turn, I think we're going to be done just about all the time, regardless pretty much of what the turn is, if it's not a 10 or a jack. So therefore, I think that just simply folding the flop, while it's difficult, is going to be our best play here. Instead, what happens is I believe our opponent opts to check, and we check back here with our pocket tens. Definitely like the check back here on the turn. I don't think that anything better is really going to call us just about ever. I mean, there might be a couple, maybe ace, king of hearts or something that calls us, but besides that, we're going to be folding out nothing that's better. And therefore, I even think jacks might call the turn. Um, really the only hand that... But that's really the only hand that could potentially... Um, beat us that's folding so definitely like the check back super standard on the river we actually go for a very thin value bet and it's not necessarily thin per se based on the question of do i think i have the best hand or not that's certainly an, an emphatic yes i definitely think, believe that we have the best hand the question becomes what sort of hands are actually going to call us and in that sense, I actually think we're quite far behind. I think the hands that call us are going to be more along the lines of a player like like player one here in our previous video. And in our previous video, we were, we saw that player one was really incapable of value betting thinly. I think a player such as him would be somewhat likely to have something like queen jack that would play really passively but would still end up with a call because the heart draws miss and also because they're not particularly good at value betting thinly i think that actually getting called by better is much more likely than the scenario of getting called here by pocket eights um because even though there are missed heart draws i think most are missed heart draws and jack 10 i think most of those actually bet the turn rather than the river and therefore it looks like somewhat obvious value the final important thing to note about this is we only bet one third pot here. And the critical thing about value betting thinly is that we don't want to make it look like we're value betting thinly. And we're missing out on a lot of value in, if we're going to be doing this in a lot of different scenarios, we're really going to be missing out on some really critical value. Remember, one of the key things about value, about th value betting thinly is that you will on occasion be called by better. And that really shows you that you are effectively value betting thinly because occasionally you should be. If you're simply never being called by better when you are value betting thinly, you absolutely need to drastically increase the amount of your thin value bets.